get by It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a beach If you find the same And right now I feel like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. Today is no different. I have Tanner Larson of Build, Grow, Scale. I'm going to introduce him formally in a second. And Tanner, um, you know, we're going to do some screen sharing today because I'm like, Tanner, you need to tear stuff down and break stuff down for us because he knows his stuff. And um, I always like to point people to other episodes, Tanner. And since we're in the e-commerce world, um, what are some cool e-commerce interviews? I don't, I don't even know. I think I've had some CPG companies, I guess, you know, RX Bar, I've had on Quest Nutrition. I got deep into the bars because I love bars uh, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. So check out that other episodes on inspiredinsider.com. And I also want to give a shout out to our mutual friend, Ian Garlic, for introducing to Tanner um, videocasestory.com. You could check Ian out uh, and what he does. And this episode is brought to you by Rise25. At Rise25, we help businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 relationships and partnerships. And we do that by helping you run your podcast. You know, for me, Tanner, relationships are the number one thing in my life. I'm always looking at ways to give to my best relationship. And I found no better way to do that over the past 10 years than to profile the people, the companies I admire and have them on my podcast and have them share with the world their knowledge and expertise and authority in what they do. So if you've thought about podcasting, you should. If you have questions, go to rise25.com. You can email us. And Tanner has a podcast as well. So you could check that out as well. And we'll give it a shout out and a link there. So today we have Tanner Larson. He's a founder of Build, Grow, Scale. It's an e-commerce optimization company that specializes in a process called revenue optimization. And what that does is it helps brands scale profitably because who cares about scaling not profitably, right? Um, and he's also the author of the best-selling book, E-Commerce Evolved. And he's updating that as of late. So it's going to have all the, the latest and greatest. Build, Grow, Skills revenue optimization methodology has generated over $400 million in physical product sales for their clients. And they've worked with companies such as Guthy Ranker, if you've heard of Proactive. And I know, uh, Tanner, you geek out on copywriting, direct response marketing like I do. So we may dig into that. Men's Health and many more. And BGS Live. Every year they have BGS Live. Okay, maybe not COVID year, but that's virtual. But BGS Live. Okay, you can go to buildgrowscale.com, check out more. I'm going to put, if you are watching the video, you'll be able to see it. They always have it. So check it out and we'll be digging deep and you'll, you'll get a little bit of a taste, uh, I guess you could say. So Tanner, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. I kind of want to start with just tell people a little bit about Build, Grow, Scale and, and what you do. Sure. So. As you said, Build, Grow, Scale is an e-com optimization company. So we specialize in working with online physical product retailers, online stores, right? And our specialty, um, we've done it all, like everything from product sourcing, product manufacturing, fulfillment, uh, optimization, ads, the whole thing. But our, we figured out that our real core, core genius is in the optimization world, and we decided to dive deep and focus on that, a la the one thing, right? Gary Keller. So what we do is, in a, in a nutshell, we take stores without changing their advertising, their traffic, their whatever, and we three to four X their profitability, their income, their revenue, and, how, and specifically how much money stays in their pocket, because it's very easy to increase revenue, but not make any more money. And so our job and what we do with the data, the optimization, the testing is come in there and optimize the store, because the best way to tie this into one nice, neat little package to give you a perfectly visual example is... Pretend that the traffic and the marketing and everything you're doing is water, okay, coming out of a hose. And then your business, your store is a bucket. And the idea is to pour the water into the bucket. And the water that stays in the bucket is your sales, okay? The problem is, in, in a perfect world, though, the bucket would be solid. But in our world, in the reality, your bucket is more like a strainer than it is a bucket. It has holes punched all over it. And all the water you're pouring in, all that traffic and marketing dollars, most of it's just leaking out the bottom, okay? Our job, is to come in and patch all those leaks so that more and more of the money stays in the bucket and it actually starts to fill and you make a lot more money. That's basically what we do. And a lot of people think, um, and you thought this at one point, mm -hmm. that just putting more traffic on the will solve the problem. Oh, totally. But I mean, if we, if we take the water example a little further, 
What happens when you have a leak and you pour more water into it at higher force? You create basically erosion and a bigger blowout happens and you, you lose more money, you lose more water. The other, the crazy thing, like in online, for some reason in businesses, people treat it differently. But if I said, hey, Jeremy, there are, there's two swimming pools right? One's full of water. The other one's empty. They're 10 feet apart. You have to use this bucket that I give you to empty one pool and fill up the other without dropping any water. And the bucket I hand you is a five gallon Home Depot bucket, but I punched a bunch of holes in it. I told you, you can't lose any water. So are you in the real world? Would you grab that bucket, dump it in and run over and try to fill it? No, you'd go, where's the duct tape? You try to figure out how to patch it first because you realize you can't lose that water. But in the business world, we just piss money away I'm like, ah, we'll just spend more and we'll eventually we'll, we'll make more. And it's, it's crazy. We'll get into some things of what you look at when you see a site and maybe we'll pull up G fuel, but I want to point out you teach this stuff, but you're a practitioner of this stuff. And if you don't know Tanner's background, he started off as a window cleaner, built a, like an actual, you know, I don't know, brick and mortar business, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And then Purpose business. Yeah. Yeah. And then eBay power sell it'll, seller to digital products, to physical products, to Amazon taking his products to, he's like, I can't want, I don't want Amazon business. Cause I like, you are about owning the customer and you know, Amazon, you don't own the customer. No, right? I love so, them as a revenue stream, but not as a business. Do you have people come to you a lot? They're maybe a high volume seller on Amazon. They're like, I know this is a huge problem. I am very dependent on one channel. And what do you tell those people and how do you help them move to whatever Shopify or one of their yeah, absolutely. Platforms. So little caveat, like even though Amazon completely screwed me over, like stole from me, I still like them. Like they still make me a lot of money and they still make my clients a lot of money. It's one of those things like you took it in the back, but you still kind of, you still, you still like it a little bit. Right. So no, nothing against Amazon other than I don't agree with some of their business practices, but from what you're saying, yes, we get high volume sellers all the time. And having been one, I know the feeling even before I knew things were bad. You just know that there's, for whatever reason, you could get a notice, they shut your listing down, or it's like a, you're balanced on eggshells all the time. So we have very high volume sellers coming to us all the time, sometimes low volume, but a lot of the bigger ones are like, I know I'm like, I got a house. I couldn't here. sleep at night. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know if I could sleep at night if everything was dependent it's, on, on it's that one stressful. channel. And so they come to us and they're like, okay, we understand, we, we, we've got, we figured out the product. We know how to, we know what the, the imagery and the copy and how to sell it on Amazon, we, but how do we take it to the other side where we actually own our customer? And they, re, they start realizing it like, yeah, I don't really control anything in my business. I don't, I, I, and it's nice because Amazon converts so highly, but it's detrimental to the actual business. And from a saleable asset perspective, you're, if you want to get a better multiple, you got to have both sides. You got to own the customer and have the Amazon channel. So they come to us and a lot of times they're like, hey, how do we, what do we do? And the big thing is, hey, you need a store, whether it's Shopify, Big Commerce, Magento, whatever platform suits your needs. Typically, we recommend Shopify because it's simpler. Um, and you know, then they got to build it up. The problem is with Amazon, they don't know how to market. They know how to yeah. use Amazon. They, they know how to use Amazon's algorithm search as well as their internal pay per click. But they don't. They struggle typically with driving traffic, and. They also don't know how to make a store convert because Amazon takes care of that for them. The average Amazon page converts between nine and 12%. That is not the real world, <laughs> right? That is not e-commerce. Right. That is not, so they get you a store. You have high and, trust. You're inside the Amazon ecosystem. You have the prime, you know, it's the Your huge... credit card's on file and you click one button and then you've bought 250 yeah. gazillion, bazillion credit cards on file, right? Nobody has that. So they struggle in that aspect. And then the problem is a lot of them give up because they're like, it just doesn't work. We're just- It's too easy. Out. I mean, it's, it's kind of golden handcuffs in a way, right? It is. It is. So, and that's, you know, a lot of it comes down to people spend so much effort and time on traffic and they don't spend nearly enough time on the actual website and what happens on site. And the reason for that is number one, traffic sexy. Number two, up until recently, it has been possible to almost outspend a bad performing site because traffic was cheap enough and there was enough slop in your ROAS or whatever that you were able to still turn a profit with a really crappy website. So the order, I mean, it's kind of the chicken and the egg a little bit. So you tell them, okay, you got to put a Shopify site up. You don't want to drive tons of traffic till you know if it's converting. So what's kind of the next step? So the, the first step truthfully is build the site, set up your data layer. This is something that not even big nine figure brands, we actually are working with uh, 
a big nine figure brand that just got Brad Pitt as their ambassador. So like big brand, no data, no Google analytics, no Google tag manager, two bazillion dollar, like two and a half billion dollar company a year, but no, no data. Okay. They're, they're navigating blind. They don't know what their website is doing. They don't know. And this is how most stores operate from small to big. So that getting your data layer set up is a big aspect so you can actually make smart decisions, learn how to test off that. And then once that data layer is set up, then you invest the money and you waste some of that because marketing is testing, right? So you're going to invest money in testing, but you don't do it until you have your data set up so that you can see how everything trickles down through the, the site. And then you just go back and you start plugging those leaks. That's how you intelligently do it. The problem is it's always the ready, fire, aim approach. And I, I'm guilty of that too. Like I just want it to get it to market and go fast and whatever. But especially in today's economy and in today's marketplace, the way advertising works now, your, your advertising is six to seven times or more expensive than it was five months ago. You can't afford to do it that way anymore. Let's say they decide, okay, Tanner, Shopify sounds great. Mm -hmm. Okay. What plug, you know, they need to plug the holes in the bucket somehow. I, I imagine people start with plugins. Are there certain plugins you recommend well, out, out of the gate? The funny thing is, is that apps are actually one of the bigger leaking points in a, in a store. Um, certain, because I got to dig on app developers for a second because they're coders, they're developers, they're not optimization people. So they build something to sell. So it adds all these things to it and they, you know, it plugs in, but no idea what, it happen, what happens downstream. A good example of that is a order bump app. Now on Shopify, you can't do uh, traditional order bumps in the, ch the checkout like we would do on a funnel with a checkbox. So you would put them in your cart or whatever else. Now, in theory, it makes sense. Okay, if I get into the cart and then I pop up, I bought some sunglasses and in the cart, it says, do you want a cleaning kit? In theory, that makes sense. And on Shopify, your app will show a green arrow saying, look, your AOV went up. But downstream in the data, you'll actually find out, and every single time we've tested, it's proven this, that you actually gain less customers and make total and less total revenue than you would mm. if you'd never had the app on. Because they abandon it. Exactly. It causes distraction. And it's not just, it's also people do the wrong kind of upsell or the right, wrong kind of bump. It's like, I'm buying a pair of high heels. And then you try to order bump me a black cocktail dress and get me to check a box to, now what woman in the world is going to buy a cocktail dress off of a checkbox without getting to see the size and the, the length and all that stuff. So it's all kinds of things like that. But typically the gain you get from an in-cart bump is way less than how much you lose from not only revenue conversion, but also acquiring less customers that you can then sell in the future. So that's are, a little example. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, are there any like, okay, all considered, you definitely need to have this type of yes, plugin. Absolutely. So one of the first ones is search. So I'm a direct response guy. I have, I always for my whole life considered search a necessary evil, something that you kind of had to have in certain cases, but if at all possible, we would eliminate it. The problem is that search traffic is actually your most valuable traffic on a store. It's worth three to four times mm -hmm. any other traffic or visitor on your site. And in most cases, your search traffic will be worth about a third of your sales just there. And it's only will only comp comprise five to 8% of your, of your traffic. So it's a big deal. So search, you can have a search functionality, but the problem is that functionality needs deeper functionality like predictive text, uh, image-based search, those kind of things. And that's an app or apps that you can install that plug into your store and make that easy. Yeah. Another piece of that. Yeah. And by the way, on WordPress, I don't know if people use WooCommerce, but like I use Swift type I think it's a free even on, uh, on WordPress. Is, it's an amazing one. So yeah, keep going. So one on the Shopify store that is good is called Product Filter and Search. Mm. Um, that's, that's a popular one. It's not too expensive. There's several other ones, but that's probably the most reasonable one. Mm -hmm. And it actually does another thing, which was my next point, is on the category pages. Okay, so the store owners think category pages are a way for them to just kind of throw stuff together to, to organize it in a way. It's not. Category pages are actually a filtering system to allow the buyer, the browser, the shopper to get into what they want to find faster. And most stores set up their category pages wrong. And one of the ways that you need to have your category page set up is to allow for filtering of the category page with checkboxes on the left-hand side. And, it's, and I'm saying left-hand side, it's not optional. I don't care what your site design or your graphic designer or your artsy fartsy sense wants to tell you. 
stats tell us the left side is prototypical. It's where it wins. It's what it needs to be, not horizontal, vertical on the left. And if you, the easy way to do this, go to Best Buy, go to Amazon, look at how their filters are and how native and intuitive they are for you to use. That's what you want to duplicate. And the reason for that is, again, let's go back to the shoe example. Let's say um, I'm on a shoe store, whatever it is, and I click on um, shoes, and for, which happens a lot. You click on shoes, and then it shows me everything I see is women's shoes. And maybe this store sells mostly women, but they do sell men's. But I only care about the men's pair, and I, there's no way for me to filter. So I have to scroll through 20 pages of women's shoes to try to find You've the nine bounced. pairs of win, yeah. men's shoes, right? That simple filtering option, if it was there, would be a massive and tangible visible benefit in conversion if you were, made it easy for your male shoppers to filter down to what they want. You know, I want to, you know, just to kind of hit home a, a point here, like going from Amazon to building, you know, owning your customer or even just owning your customer with conversion. You had one lady who I don't know the full story, but she was not even attracting that many new customers, but she was, I don't know if she was deploying email and she was rocking and rolling without new customers. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Um, yeah. So this is a, this is a, she's got a great business. So she owns a plus size store. Um, and she's doing it, does a couple million dollars. Well, this was before, did a couple million dollars a year. And she came into our program and she's like, she was raving like, yeah, we were actually, we were talking about one store in particular and saying how their, their repeat customer rate was too low because it was like nine or 10%. And she chimes in the chat and she's like, yeah, my store has a 90 or 87% repeat customer rate average for the entire year. And I'm like, well, that's amazing. But can I tell you the bad news? And she's like, there is no bad news. I, have, I, I make a lot of money from this. And I said, okay. So she, pulls, she comes on board and we start talking to her. And the, the reality of that is, yes, repeat customer rate is great. It's even more important now. But if you have a massive repeat customer rate in the 80 to 90% range or, or more, what that's telling me is you're not acquiring enough new traffic. Because if you are acquiring new customers, it mm. dilutes your repeat customer ratio. And yeah. what we told her was basically, and her ROAS was insane and all this stuff, which all makes sense if it's all repeat customers. We're like, you're at about 3 million now. You could have been at 20 million or more this year if we had yeah. just lowered that number by increasing your acquisition. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah, it's kind of like if someone has a high-end offer and everyone's saying, yes, you're probably charging too little, something like that. Um, walk me through, you know, your book, right? Yeah. E-commerce evolved. You mentioned... Uh, when before we hit record, that the store now I mean, in today's environment, the store can convert as well as a funnel sometimes Absolutely. and optimize the store. So talk a little bit about that sure. and what's changed. So again, as I've said, I am a direct response guy. I was cut my teeth in direct response. That's how I built my window cleaning business and I translated to online. So I am a I'm a f formal sales letter, copywriter, funnel, upsell. Like I love that stuff. It's in my blood. Okay. And I, that's how I got early success with e-com. While every, when, when stores sucked, I was able to leverage funnels and then a lot of direct response principles and did really well. When I wrote the first version of this book in 2016, technology was at the point still where funnels 99% of the time would outperform a store. And, we, and what we would do is we would leverage the funnels to, draw, to, to build a business, right? So you'd build like a landing page and then send them to the store? Like well, it's, sometimes it depended on the business. But yes, mm -hmm. the problem with funnels, even today, is that funnels are great for acquisition, not necessary in all cases, but they are, they're, they're purpose driven for acquisition. They are terrible for repeat and lifetime customer value. Repeat purchase, because think about it. I go through Organifi's funnel to buy their green juice. Love Drew's product, great, great stuff. I, cool. Once I've bought it through the funnel and I've gone through that ridiculous upsell sequence, I never want to do that again. I already <laughs> like the product. I just want to be able to reorder or buy their next stuff or their, or right. their red juice or their yellow juice or whatever they call it, gold juice, right? <laughs> right. Like, and that, but that's every customer. So stores, when you have a funnel, should be built to back clean up, right? And do all your, the rest of it. However, what we've been able to do over the past basically five years, six years, is we've been able to take all that direct response stuff that we've always been able to do on funnels and implement it in a way backed by data that now stores, we can get them to convert as well, if not better in some cases than a funnel which is beneficial to the e-com industry specifically, because there's a lot of brands and products out there that are not conducive to a funnel, like an apparel store. 
you, or any store that has lots of SKUs. Maybe you can build one funnel out for one product, but it doesn't. It's not conducive when you have a lot high SKUs, right? So we need to make those stores convert as well as possible, as high as possible, with the same kind of direct response principles and data backed science that actually allows that to happen. And that's what the new book is about. So when I wrote the first version, like I said, it was 2016. It was cutting edge for 2016. Right now, about half of it would be still doable, but there's better stuff. So the beginning of this year, we rewrote the book completely, um, deleted three chapters, added four more, rewrote every single word. Like, and I mean, my, if you look at this book, it's a kitchen sink book. Most, people, most, most guys' books are like this. It's like, where are we? Something like that. It's like, hey, look how awesome I am. I'm like, no. Never buy my, anything but my book and you have a business. Um, at BGS Live the last time in 2019, uh, I had a guy come up to me. And this is a little side note story I just want to share. So a, a guy came up to me um, and he said, hey, uh, just wanted to say thank you. And I'm like, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice, nice to meet you. And he's like, he's like, you don't know, but I bought your book. And he's like, I was a chemist. I was out of work. I was hmm. living in my little warehouse space. And not doing all that well. And he's like, I got your book and wanted to start a business. I didn't have much money. I bought some concentrated CBD. I diluted it down because I knew how to do that and diluted it down into some pet products. And I turned basically a hundred dollars into about $50,000. Mm. And he's like, I just kept doing that. And I used your book. And he's like, it's the only marketing information I've ever bought. I've never bought anybody else's course or looked at anything else. I followed your book. And today we're the number four pet CBD brand in America. Wow. And so my book's not a fluff piece. I don't care if you like me or anything else. Buy the book, say you hate me, cross out my face on the back, but just use what's in it because it, it is that good. I love it. And then I'm going to have you, we're going to go to G Fuel in a second, uh, Tanner. Um, and, but I want to just ask, I geek on direct response. Um, what, who are some of the people that you followed throughout the years that you were either mentors, distant mentors, mentors in, in direct response world? So, I mean, I, I'm a dinosaur. So like I go back to 2001 in, in the internet space, which kind of makes people like, wait, there was internet back then kind of thing. But my, like one of my first mentors was actually Corey Rudel, um, who mm. um, you ran the internet marketing center and then unfortunately died uh, after a car crash. Um, but yeah, so he was basically one of my first mentors. I was big into all of Dan Kennedy stuff from ever. I think everybody who's into direct response, uh, love Gary Halbert, uh, love a lot of bond stuff as well. Um, and then, uh, you know, actually the, the, the old school Jim Edwards, um, uh, back in the old days, um, I, I followed a lot of Jim Edwards stuff. I've had Jim on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Jim's a great guy. Yeah. Um, I love, I love his old stuff. Like I'm just, I guess I'm kind of nostalgic in that way, but I just always loved his older stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so those are a lot of the guys that I, that I followed a lot. And, you know, I can't, there was another guy named David something who owned a, a old school forum um, Alan says, of course, but like that was just warrior forum stuff. But he, he owned this copywriting website forum where everybody would go and you'd post your, you'd, you could post your copy in a thread and all mm. these other copywriters would basically tell you how dumb you are and how much it sucked. And <laughs> I, I basically learned how to write copy doing that, you know, and. Uh, it wasn't David Deutsch, was it? No, it no, was. Okay. That was a different one. Um, okay. I'll, it'll probably come to me in a minute. But I mean, anyway. I bring it up because I think it's important. Um, and I was watching an interview you did with Brett Thompson, um, who's mm -hmm. your, your copywriter. And I, I encourage people to check out, um, you know, the Build, Grow, Scale YouTube channel. They have some amazing resources on there. And they were just geeking out, I mean, in a good way, because, you know, really, the, I believe the fundamentals of a lot of any marketing um, is direct response, whether it's via email, whether you're That's saying it, whether it's on the page. Um, and so it's, it's really important. Absolutely. It's, it's made the, it, my career from 2001 to now 100% would not have happened in any level without direct response and learning copy learning and just the basic direct response principles, like everything I've done in my life, everything I have is I owe it to direct response. Yeah. Um, and so I'm inspired insider. I actually interviewed, I think almost all of the Gary Halbert proteges on my podcast, just because I wanted to learn from, I mean, Gary Halbert, unfortunately, uh, rest in peace is not alive anymore, but his proteges are including, like you said, bond. So um, I want to go through G fuel and have you break down a few things and talk about what, where should we look and, and what, sure. what do you think when you see this? Site? So let's start with what you just closed. <laughs> right? Right? I'm like, so yeah, 
That, so that's that's a perfect. So two things there. Number one, how effective is it when you naturally closed it with? And you probably would have done that with if I wasn't here anyway. Totally. But the other yeah. thing is is and I have this this site. So let me guys give you some background. This store um, is a very very successful store, but by all rights, it should not be. This store is bleeding money six ways from Sundays. We've critiqued it and, and, and tore it apart multiple different times. They've never made any changes. Of course, they're making money. So, you know, they probably don't care, but they could be making massive amounts more from what they're doing. Now, um, one thing is I will sit talk about this pop up. So the, the page loads and before I can even see what this site is, because a lot of times you go to a site off an ad or whatever else or store, you don't really know what they sell. OK, you land there and then this pop up comes up. It says, hey, get 25 percent off. Give us your email. And it, I, I'm like, OK, first of all, what do you sell? I haven't even had a chance to consider your offer. Why are you giving me 25 percent off? Is your shit bad or is it overpriced and I'm going to need a discount? Like this, these are the things that like subconsciously totally we all do in our head. So yeah. now not it to cheapens say it in a way. Yeah, right off the bat. offers are great, but they need to be used strategically in the right way. And in today's environment, they're even more important because traffic's so expensive, you need to leverage and capture as much of it as possible. That's not doing it right. Okay, so the next thing is, now you've had a, you guys have had a chance to kind of look at this, but when you land on the site and you see it, you see Spider-Man, you see a box and you're like, what is it? Yeah, right? I, I picture they're selling like mugs. I mean, if I didn't know, like mugs or yeah. cups so or something. It's, it's not clear. And the yeah. purpose of your homepage is not to sell. The purpose of your homepage is to uh, reinforce trust, pr provide very clear, immediate in, uh, knowledge that, hey, I'm on the right place. I'm in the place that I want to be. And it's where I, you know, and then also help them get off the homepage as quickly as possible into a browsing or shopping environment. You're just a visitor on the homepage. However, what we say is the official drink of esports. Okay. Now, the other thing is, is they call it the drink. It took me about, the first time I went through about 15 minutes before I realized it's actually not a drink. I was thinking like an energy can, like a bang. That's or a what I mean. It's a powder mm. and you get a shaker. So it's, it's almost like it's a fitness drink, but it's for guys who like to sit in front of their computer. Right. So th that's not clear either. But then we also have this crazy navigation that there's no hierarchy of focus. You don't know where to look on the page. Right. And then if you look at the top on the, under the G fuel logo, it says search but the search isn't prominent. Now, when you go to yeah. Amazon, how is search? It's a big search bar in the top of the screen. Why? Because search traffic is valuable. Having a hidden search like this, I guarantee you their search rate is a, a fraction of what it should be. It should be a normal yeah. box. Just it's not like intuitive. Amazon. I wouldn't know to, it's and not it, even a bar. It makes everything yeah. disappear. Yeah. And you don't have to do it, but when you search, the search, the, the way it searches is actually not nice either. It's not awesome. Yeah. I'm not even sure what to search because I'm not sure what this yeah. is, yeah, yeah, so yeah. What do I want here? Now, then you have navigation is home. Okay, well, everybody knows to click the logo. They don't need a home button. But then we have sale, shop now, holiday gift guide, new arrivals, build your own box, rewards, learn more, our company. Where do I go? Now, shop now, people are like, oh, that, of course, you're supposed to go to shop. Testing shows, user testing, data, everything, that shop now or shop or is one of the worst things you can ever do because you're basically asking for the kiss before you've got their name. It's, mm. a, it's a commitment level that they're not really to make. They don't want to shop. They're browsing. They're, they're viewing. And also shop now doesn't tell me what you have. I still don't know. Now, um, go ahead and go ahead and into now, now shop now. Energy formula, ready to drink, hydrate. Oh, they actually have a ready to drink now. That's new. Um, so go ahead and click on energy. Just click formula. on shop now. Or yeah, yeah, go ahead. Do that. Just click shop now and see if it actually still loads. Yeah. All right. So we go to collections, G Fuel. This will... This will be a perfect example. Okay. Now just scroll for a second. Anyone feel all overwhelmed? Looking they have a lot of, lot of flavors here. A, lot, a gazillion. I don't flavors. know what a hype sauce is. Oh, it's rather. No, and lemonade. another thing is, okay. is they do a lot. They do a lot of collaborations with like pro gamers and stuff and make a flavor unique to that gamer. Interesting. Okay. Which is actually a brilliant move. Yeah. Because it captivates or captures other audiences. But totally. If yeah. I was a fan, let's say, Jeremy, you were a big gamer and I'm, I follow you and then you, you have a collaboration with this company. Dr. J's that? Raging R yeah, Raspberry Raging, or yeah, something. Raging yeah. Raz, right? <laughs> How do I find Dr. J's Raging Raz? Yeah. I I'd have to search Dr. through everything. J, yeah. Right. And then if you go back to the top, 
there's the there's there's no filtering. The, the filter is hidden behind a thing. And on mobile, it's a way worse experience. Mm. But you click this now. Okay, I can sort by flavor. Okay, tubs, boxes, packs. I don't know what those are. And special, like, but I can't I can't sort by powder. I can't sort by ready to drink. I can't sort by anything that I actually know how to use intuitively. Yeah. Um, I didn't mean to click that. No, you're fine. I mean, yeah. I click through this site all the time, and I I still get confused. Now, go ahead and. Click on any product you want. Um, and we'll, do, just, we'll try the sour blue. Chug yeah, so that ride. one next to it, PewDiePie. That's, a one, that's an influencer. PewDiePie is like a famous oh, right. uh, YouTuber, I believe. Um, so anyway, okay, now we're here on the product page. Above the fold, on the, we've all heard before, above the fold is gold, right? This above the fold is useless, right? <laughs> like, where do I, okay, where's my quantities? Where's my product information? You keep scrolling down. Um, that's new. They used to not even have the shake scoop stuff. So that down at the bottom is where I actually learn about the servings per tub, sugar-free, all those kind of things. Yeah. And then I have to go all the way down. People don't want to scroll. The yeah. average scroll depth on a, on a site these days is one and a half scrolls on a, on mobile. This, where would you put this scrolls. supplement facts? Would you put it that in should the, actually be right in the below? In, in that. Image. Yeah. yeah. And, and below it should be in mo- both locations. Got it. Um, but above the fold right here, I should have, um, quick stats. Like I should know that it's sugar-free. That's a huge thing, right? Mm. I should also know that that's 40, 40 grand or 40 servings per tub lasts a month. Like how long does 40 servings last me? Yeah. I didn't even see that sugar-free is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, all these things, every one of those things could be up above the, above the fold in a bullet form. And then they could have more details below. Um, they have all those little blue icon things that don't tell you what they are. Um, what, mm. what does that What does that mean? Those actually mean something to them, but it doesn't help. Yeah. Me, see. Um, then if we go up, go ahead and add to cart. If you can ever find a button, <laughs> there it is. that's another problem. Add it to cart. Okay, hang on. Don't do anything. What is prototypical? I'm expecting to go to the cart or have a something slide in that shows me it's been added to my cart. So now I either can, this is not a good way to do it. Now click, go to cart. Let's see if they changed it. I haven't looked at it in a while. Okay. So now I'm in the cart. This cart is awful. Um, (laughs) But first of all, we don't check out from the cart. We proceed to check out from the cart. Again, it sounds simple. Testing shows that people expect to check out. They expect to actually have done the payment. So proceed to check out as as a piece. The total above actually seeing the product makes no sense. Um, and then it's, it's in two places. It's like they duplicated the cart multiple times. On mobile, the experience is awful again. Um, I, I believe actually, if you click quantity one and plus, plus, plus it up one, I'm pretty sure, yeah, cart the cart doesn't even change. Okay, so now this is a huge thing. Now, this technology to auto update a cart is only about 15 years old. So it's not like they've had a chance to catch up, right? But what happens when this happen, this occurs, and we see this on big brands, including brands like Scientific American, who's one of our clients. So we fixed this when we first started working with them. You have a massive a cause of abandonment on the next screen because psychologically, people are like me. They can't do math in their head great. So they go, oh, 35 bucks. I changed the quantity. The price doesn't change. So my head still says 35 bucks. I go to checkout and all of a sudden it's 70 bucks or 73 bucks or whatever. Mm. And now- By I the way, to- I don't want to make you late for your next- Call. We're, we're okay. So, we're okay. Okay. Let's let's keep. So we'll we'll. Go, can, can, I can keep digging in on this. Yeah. Go on. You just question. say you just say un, cry uncle and yeah. All right. So then. So anyway, that's a big thing. And then that whole pop up, which also pops up on mobile, is terrible. So then click checkout. Empty update. Those buttons shouldn't be there. That's all basic tech that should be built in. Um, now their checkout. Oh, they actually. This is a big step for them. They actually added their logo to their checkout. Um, it's only been a couple of years that that hasn't been there. This um, you mean at the top? Yeah, yeah. which yeah. is super simple. Now, but what, what's missing here is any kind of trust. Where's yeah. the customer service information? The phone number if I have a problem. Mm. Um, email. Why are you asking for my email? Why are you asking for my phone number? There, there is the ability to add micro text to these fields. And we have tested this. Your form failure rate and form error rate, which means they give you a bogus email address or a bogus phone number, is, is huge on Shopify. Now, except for on the critical forms like shipping name, that kind of thing. Phone number and email are the most spoofed. Well, phone number and email are the two important ones to a marketer, right? 
So phone number allows SMS, email allows camp card abandonment. So we have to give them a reason to do that. So email, parentheses, required for shipping notifications. Mm. Phone, question mark, or parentheses, required for shipping updates or tracking or whatever. Give, give them, them a reason. reason. And if you're not using the phone number because you're not doing SMS, if you aren't, you're, you're dumb because it's huge. Like a third, of, a third of your recovery revenue comes from phone. Turn the phone field off. It's, a non, it's an optional field. Every additional form field you have in any type of thing, whether it's email, conversion, uh, applications, whatever, additional form fields create um, a drop-off. Basically, the extra form fields uh, reduce completion rate, right? So the less form fields, the better. So you'd put something uh, on the right-hand side, some kind of customer service, social proof, reviews, something. We built an app that was designed to do this for people that would actually build all this because Shopify doesn't make it possible. So we mm. figured out a way to do it. And then Shopify said, hey, we want people to only be able to do that if they give us $2,000 a month and upgrade to Shopify Plus. So they closed our, our back door and made our app no longer function. So mm. now the only way to do this is to upgrade to Plus. And then... Another thing that they don't, that's not awesome about it is they don't, they unlock the checkout, but they don't actually help you do anything to the checkout. So most plus stores don't have the ability to customize this mm. because they don't know how to edit the code. But, so that's, I'd say that's a pretty basic one on G Fuel, but that, just those things that have I you, Do you have an opinion on this? Um, yes, I, that should be suppressed. Okay. Cause I was going to say, when I see this, I'm like, oh, there's probably a discount kind exactly, of out there. That and- is exactly what people do. They it, it causes a distraction point. It's like, oh, maybe I should go Google coupon, G Fuel coupon and find something. And then they get distracted. They see a cat and they watch a cat video and they're done. Exactly. We suppress it behind a button or a line of text with a link that says, you know, click here if you have a, if you have a coupon code Yeah. or redeem coupon code. This is more obvious than the search function on the, on the front, right? It so and it's, yeah. it's way less important, <laughs> you know? Um, now you're limited in, Shop- in Shopify on most plans to how dialed in you can make this checkout, but everything I mentioned is 100% doable. Um, the other thing that's a problematic that they're doing really, really poorly is this express checkout. Now Shopify just made a change that doesn't allow us to suppress this. Used to be we could suppress it here and only have it show up on the payment information page where it actually was relevant. The problem here is first of all, when they click on this, if they click on PayPal or GPay or whatever, it takes them away from your checkout mm. and it does it before they put their email address in. So you can't do abandoned cart recovery. Mm. But the other thing that's worse about this is Amazon Pay, Google Pay, or Facebook Pay, that's even more worse. Uh, Amazon Pay and Google Pay typically, now in some instances it's different, but across the board, it's about one to 2% of your purchase rate will use Amazon Pay or Google Pay. That is not worth an option because those same people will just use their credit card. They already yeah. know. Shop so you just pay, get rid of all these. You can suppress them. Yeah, turn them off. Shop pay is one that's growing. It's basically the same thing as Shopify payments, only they're calling it shop pay now. Um, some audiences, there's a vast, a, a big chunk of their audience uses shop pay. So it's beneficial. PayPal is a good one because up to 30% of your revenue or your buyers want and prefer PayPal. But the other ones, uh, Facebook pay has never been more than about 0.5%. So half of 1% for any of our stores we've tested it on. Mm. So re- reducing clutter, reducing things to distract them and get them focused on what they're doing. That's the whole thing. It's direct response. Streamline the process, remove distractions, remove objections, imp- put stuff in. So there are no objections, remove information and place it at the right time in the, in the process and streamline, remove the road bumps from that on-site yeah. buyer's journey. That's yeah. Increase really social proof. All the, I think when you, people should watch, you know, um, you talked about ADA, you know, and, and all of those direct response principles, and you could incorporate them on all of these pages. Essentially. Absolutely. And yeah. every page, when I was talking about leaks in their leaky bucket, every page that your uh, visitor, buyer, or shopper lands on, on your website is leaking. Not one single page is not leaking. And it's, you know, some pages leak more than others. And the other thing is when you start patching those leaks, this is just a little tip. When you start patching leaks in your business, start from the money and work backwards. So check out first, then cart, then product page, then category page, mm. then homepage. And the reason for that is if you start at the back, you, everything gets impacted by that as it comes through. But if you start at the front and you optimize, say your homepage, but your product page, cart and checkout is still broken, none of the optimization from the homepage carries through because it all gets lost. Love it. Yeah. Yeah like 80, 20 or site, lowest hanging fruit priority first. And I love that. Yeah. 
Because I mean, the easiest thing, someone just go to their homepage and start tweaking it when they had someone abandoned, go yeah. for go for that first. Yep. Yeah, I love it. Um, first of all, Tanner, thank you. Thank you for your time. This could go another two hours and it'd I be actionable and amazing. <laughs> yeah, totally. And um, I know you got to get to your next thing. So I just want to point people towards, go to buildgrowscale.com, check out more. You know, if you've learned anything, which I have, you can check out his book. You can check out um, the BGS Live, um, which uh, you can go to buildgrowscalelive.com, go directly there. Any other places we should point people towards, Tanner, that'd be good. Honestly, I mean, like you mentioned our YouTube channel, there is so much free stuff on there um, that's really good. You can check out our podcast too. It's optimized e-commerce, uh, but go to the Build, Grow, Scale website. Links to everything are there. You don't have to go searching for it. And um, that's the, the easy portal to find everything. But yeah. I spend some time there. Our blog is actually really good. Our blog is written by our actual optimization experts, the people who work in the business. We call it part of our continuing education program. They all have to write articles ex- teaching their expertise because it helps make them better. And that's what's published on our site. It's not a blog writer or you know someone like that. It's actually the experts who do this for yeah. a living. Yeah, here's the one with you and Brett that I watch right mm-hmm. here. Why speed copyright is important. And there's a lot of great resources, free resources for people to dig into. Mm-hmm. So absolutely, Tanner, I want to be the first one to thank you. Thank you so much. And everyone check out more, learn more, buildgrowscale.com, inspiredinsider.com. And thanks so much. Thank you. What I've got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the